What up? What up, everyone? How goes it? Starting a little. I guess we're two minutes early, so we'll wait and talk about anything silly after two minutes. Everybody, uh, like normal, tell me where you're you're tuning in from in the chat. It's fun to see all the different places people are saying what's up from. I am in a very rainy anchorage at Bonacord on the island of... Someone messaged me and told me how to pronounce this, so they might be punking me. I don't know, but they said it's pronounced Kowwow. Kowwow Island. And they may just be punking me, and I just may be saying silly shit right now. But uh, in the Huraki Gulf in New Zealand... Oh, it's so fun to see everybody's spots. So cool. Um, as always, uh, it's hard for me to sort of like talk and keep up with the chat. Um, it goes a little fast. I'll hop back and forth. It's a little more low key today um, because there's not a specific subject. We're just hanging out. Um, if you see Sarah Satya, in the chat she's my designated troll hunter for the day and she'll be posting links to different things that we're talking about and she might answer questions in my place if i don't notice the question so if you see sarah answering a question you can take that as fact um so one more minute and then we'll get into it um uh what else? It's so fun to see. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe there's so many people from around the ways. People in the UK. It must be late in the UK right now. You guys are crazy. Thanks for tuning in. How many people on right now? I can't even see. Oh, here we go. Uh, 132. Fun. Wow. Lots of people in BC. I would love to sail in British Columbia. Um. <clears throat> All right, all right. Let's see. Okay. It's 2 p.m. in Aotearoa. Hello. <laughs> you guys made the channel reach 100,000 subscribers. Now, that is ridiculous. <laughs> um, I never in a billion years thought the channel would grow the way it's grown. Um. I remember when I first started the channel, I never thought it would be like my full-time job. I first started the channel, I just wanted to share my adventures, show people stuff I was doing, things I was learning, and and everything. I put up my first sailing videos in 2015 uh, of uh, my very first delivery I did from San Diego, California, to San Francisco. Very slow bash up the California coast um, on a pretty famous sailing vessel, Intrepid, which the young teenage sailor, Zach Sutherland, sailed around the world solo, um, attempting to set the world record. But then there was a young kid, I think it was an English kid, just behind him who was younger that actually took the record before he even got it. So, But so the new owner of that boat in 2015 brought me on his crew to help deliver that. That was my first delivery. And so that was my first sailing video that I had posted on youtube um so the channel's been around a minute um i have a couple numbers here i'd like to get into um i have funny kind of specific sort of numbers um september 9th of 2017 was when i reached 1000 subs and i know that for a hard fact because i was working as an art handler for the art gallery Blum and Poe in Los Angeles. And my good buddy, Freddie Kunoff was having a show there. It was his show was opening that night and we were all sitting in the back waiting to make sure everything was okay. During the opening, we were sitting in the back waiting and I had been on 999 subs for like a month. 
And I was like complaining about it. My friend Patrick Merch was like, fine. And he opened his phone and like subscribed to get me to a 1000. So it's, I have like that funny memory of like, you know, September 9th, 2017, 1000. Um, the channel views in the lifetime of the channel is 9,343,930 total channel views, which is crazy. Uh, the top videos, the top one, of course, is the Hawaii Passage video, 3,707,476 at this moment. And the second one is the Passage to French Polynesia, which I call Le Passage, um, 902,000 views, 726. So we're almost at a million on that Le Passage. Um, I made a playlist today. Um, and Sarah, if you could grab, figure out how to grab the link to this playlist and put it in the chat, that'd be cool. I made a playlist today, this morning of my top 10 favorite episodes I've ever made. And my number one in that list is that passage to French Polynesia. I think that's the most beautiful film that I've made so far. I really love that film. Um, but I put in, yeah, 10, 10, my 10 favorite, uh, videos that i've ever made out of three i think 371 videos up on youtube i'm having tea to celebrate because i'm you know super hardcore I'm also having some dates which is funny i just noticed on this package they're called yolo dates that to me is hilarious um okay what else can we talk about okay so as far as growth of the channel goes, when I left LA in August of 2021, I had 12,000 subscribers, <clears throat> which those were hard fought <laughs> subscribers to get 12,000 subscribers. I've never bought a subscriber or a like or a view in my life for my Instagram, for YouTube. You see, I see some channels that I know do that because they'll have like 10 videos and they'll have like 20,000 followers. And I'm like, how do you have 20,000 followers with 10 videos? Um, so I've never done that. I just grew my channel organically. Obviously, the video, the passage video to Hawaii went viral, which many of you know me from that video. Um, and that skyrocketed the channel. Um, and... But before that, I had 12,000 hard fought subs, which I was, I'm still very proud of that number. Um, I remember when I started, I always just wanted 10,000. I was like, I, I just, if I could get 10,000 subs, that would be awesome. That's like the, the level of which I had hoped to reach someday. And I remember when I got 10,000, and Camille kind of busted my balls, and she was like, now you're just going to be saying you want 20,000. But I wasn't. I was totally content. When I reached 10,000, I was like, that's awesome. Like, I really, that was something I really thought was really hard to reach and it didn't come easy and um, I was stoked on it. So, um, but then to go, you know, in two years from 12,000 to a hundred thousand is totally insane. And I'm really grateful for everybody that watches the videos. Um, you know, it would be nothing <laughs> without you guys your support, your comments, your likes, you checking in, and uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, let's see what's happening in the chat. It looks like it's going off the rails. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Let's see here. Um, boy. Boy. Someone said, what country I'm in now? I'm in New Zealand. I'll be in New Zealand. Me and Trite will be in New Zealand this entire year. Uh, and then in January, we'll be sailing to Australia. Um, what else? Boy, it is hard to look at this chat. It's really going for it. Um, so uh, maybe I'll just show you guys outside real quick. It is very rainy and I don't want to get the laptop wet, but I just sailed into this Anchorage, Bonacord Anchorage here on Kauau Island 
in New Zealand. And uh, I'll show you. Ooh. That's my good friends, Rala, over there. Very, very rainy. I ran here. I did I did 45 nautical miles yesterday from Fangare uh, to a um, place called Omaha Cove, which is here in the Horaki Gulf, and uh, spent just the night. I wasn't even there 12 hours. And then from there, I came here, which was like a two-hour passage this morning. And got in right as it started raining. Um, so, what else? What else? Um, oh, I should show you the, you know, this is one of the great, you know, this is what I film everything on. This little dude should be well celebrated. <laughs> uh, you can see I need a new little wind, uh, wind thing there. Thank you, Brian Wilson. Appreciate that. Um, I shoot everything on GoPro nowadays on GoPro Hero Nines. I have two of them. I have two of them. This is my dry one, and I have one that I use for like snorkeling. Both of them are kind of need to be replaced sometime soon, but they're doing okay. They act a little weird, but I just bought new batteries for them, so that might help. Um, Everything I shoot is on this. When I started the channel, everything I shot was on like an iPhone 5 or maybe even an older iPhone than that. Everything, I, like the first several seasons, especially when I started the episodics in 2017, everything was shot on an iPhone other than underwater footage. Um, and you can tell that because the quality is terrible of the early videos, but that's all I had. I just didn't have access to anything else. Uh, I know a lot of channels use like fancy DSLRs and all that stuff. But like for me, solo, I have to film everything and I film it myself. Like this little clamp, <laughs> I can just carry it, clip it wherever, get shots. And this media mod housing is the jam for like wind noise reduction. Um, and thank you, John Conway, for telling me to buy this. Like John bought one for SB Fullerian. And I remember the day he got it. He was like, dude, you have to buy one of these immediately. And he sent me like side-by-side -side videos of the difference in the wind noise reduction with, with and without. And I ordered one within an hour of him sending me those videos. So that is the jam for sure. <clears throat> um, somebody just asked what the temperature is here. It's like, I think it's 62 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So... I don't know if that's like 18 degrees Celsius. I might have that. I'm not good at converting Celsius yet, but um, yeah, it got down to the 40s the other night, uh, like 44 degrees. Thank you, Captain Mike. Appreciate it. Um, someone said, slow down the side chat. I don't know how to slow it down. Uh, sorry, I have no idea. <laughs> um. Someone says, do you have a house somewhere or you only got the boat? No, I don't have a house anywhere. I don't have anything in storage. The only thing that's in storage in LA is like my family photos, like a revolver that was my grandpa's and um, like my archives of like art stuff and, and stuff like written like books and magazine articles and stuff. I have nothing else. I just, everything I own is on Tritea. Thank you, G-Man. Appreciate it. Um, someone's asking Black Sabbath or Led Zeppelin. Black Sabbath, of course. Um, uh, what else? What else? Um... Someone's asking if I'm going to get a new tattoo while in, in New Zealand. Uh, yeah, I will probably be getting tattooed here. 
but now that I live full time on the boat, it's like there's a budget to think about, you know. Um, in LA, a good majority of my tattoos on my whole body were bartered for. So I ha I could I could do things for people that, you know, like um, I could like I. I traded a ton of tattoos early on for building websites for tattooers. And uh, my friend, Sean, like I helped him pack up all of his, a big painting show of his that went to Europe. I helped organize that whole thing. So I traded that, those services for tattoos. So a lot of my tattoos are bartered for. So now that I'm living full time on the boat, I don't, I don't have like a kind of a flexible budget for getting a bunch of tattoos from places, uh, you know, and I believe good tattoos, you know, they're expensive for a reason. So I don't mind paying, you know, the prices that it requires for good tattoos, but I just don't have the funds. Um, let's see here. Um, let me see what's happening here. Someone keeps asking about pirates. Pirates are only a concern in places where they operate, which is like Somalia. The Philippines has a lot of bandits right now. Um, pirates are not a major concern. Um, someone asked if I do any fishing. I talk about, Sarah, will you post the video link to me talking about when, I'm, when I do and do not fish? Um Someone just keeps saying kangaroos question mark. What else? Someone asked for any plans to take on crew members in the future. Absolutely not. Um, I will do all ocean sailing solo. And that's my build. High water alarm. Um, I do all ocean sailing solo. And... I only let like really good friends or family come on and do coastal cruising. Trite is way too small and I'm a complete introvert. Um, and uh, I love solo sailing, especially ocean passages. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Man, there's a lot of questions. Um, Someone says, do I consider using OpenCPN? I do I do use OpenCPN, just not for my primary navigation. But I used it a lot in uh, the two Motus for like overlay charts of satellite images over the charts so that you could see coral bombies that were uncharted. That's like very handy for that. Um, what else? Boy, this chat is just going crazy. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess I can make an, an, a semi-announcement. Uh, I will be in the U.S. I'll be on the mainland for about two months, starting at the beginning of June. Um, I'm putting Tritea in a marina, and I have a caretaker staying on board her. And then I'm going to be stateside. I've had a really cool opportunity uh, presented to me that I can't talk about right now. We're going to do like a joint announcement as the time gets closer. But I will be in Los Angeles for the first like first two weeks of June. And I'm going to try to set up like a talk at either a yacht club or some kind of spot um, and a meetup. Um, so... I'll do a big meetup while I'm in LA and um, hopefully do a talk with video and everything to talk about the, uh, the adventure so far. Um, and then I can't really go into any more about the rest of the plans, but it's a really cool opportunity and there's going to be an amazing film that comes out of it. Um, and then I'll be coming back to New Zealand uh, towards the end of July. And, um, continuing to explore New Zealand throughout the winter, Southern Hemisphere winter. And then come spring in January, that's when I push off for Australia. And I plan on sailing. I think I'm going to clear out of Nelson and sail maybe to Sydney or even a, a more Southern port. I haven't looked into it yet um, because I want to spend 
kind of that the cyclone season in Tasmania and southern Australia. So that's the plan right now. With sailing, plans always change, so you never know until you go. But that is what is going on with that. Uh, let me see. What else? Someone says, how far ahead is your journey planned? I have a loose plan for all the way around the world, but things always are always open to change, especially with boats. Um, originally, I thought I was going to be sailing through the South Pacific, get to New Zealand, be in New Zealand until April, right now, and then sail as soon as cyclone season was done to Australia and keep going. And then when I got here, my engine failed in Fiji and I had to have it rebuilt here in New Zealand, which took two and a half months. Um, I was exploring around the Bay of Islands with no engine for a bit and just popping around with engineless, uh, waiting for my engine to be rebuilt. And so that kind of like killed my ability to really see New Zealand the way I wanted to. And I was like, it seems absurd to like push off and can just keep charging. So I absolutely love New Zealand. I love the people here. It's like Mecca for cruisers. There's so many good anchorages, great holding. You know, there is a lot of weather to deal with, but I don't mind that because I've been in the tropics for so long where the weather's just kind of like constant or kind of like a stable per paradise. I mean, I went from LA to Hawaii to the South Pacific. So I don't mind uh, different types of weather now. Um, so, but yeah, so, but with the circumnavigation, you know, I'm going to go the trade wind route. So Australia, Southeast Asia, across the Indian Ocean, hopefully to Madagascar and, and Africa, South Africa, and um, go from there. I've, that's when I'll decide if I'm going to, I might sail down and double the horn then, um, or, or I might go through the canal. It'll just depend on what's happening with me and the boat at that point. Um, I'm down for either one. If I don't double the horn on this circumnavigation, when I do my east about circumnavigation, I'll do, I'll I'll do Cape Horn. But um, yeah, you just kind of gotta have a loose plan and then just uh, kind of roll with it. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Let's see here. Sarah, if you see anyone making religious talk, please get rid of them. Uh, there's a zero tolerance for any kind of cult religious talk in my anything, period. Um, somebody asked how I started sailing. You can look up. I have a number of podcast interviews I've done where I've talked about that, my background with all that stuff. Um What else? Uh, um, I have, I guess I could talk about the articles I have coming out. I have an article in Yachting World that's currently out in the new issue. I haven't seen a copy yet. It's really hard to find here. Sarah's looked all over Southern California and hasn't found it. Um, and... So we haven't found the print copy yet, but uh, they do have the digital copy. Um, it's the first time I've written about the rudder situation in detail, and I'm proud of it. I'm proud of how the text came out, and um, proud of the article. And so check that out. Thanks to Yachting World for having me. Um, I'm going to be writing for them more in the future for sure. I have an article that just came out in Latitude 38, which is a free little magazine that all over the West Coast of the U.S. Um, when um, I lived in Southern California, so that that's fun. Um, so that, yeah, so that came out this week. You can see it, the free download on their website, Latitude38.com. Um, or you can pick up the free paper magazine of that. That's about 
a sketchy situation I found myself in in the Molokini Channel in Hawaii, uh, where <laughs> cruised in with like happy, fun downwind sailing. Yeah, like it was me and Kimberly Wood. We're sailing in, we're like, yeah, this is awesome. And then once we got in, it's like a very tight crescent volcanic crater that's supposed to have incredible snorkeling and scuba diving. And as soon as we got in, we realized like the beautiful sailing, the tailwind we had had was actually like 17 knots and we had trouble getting out and we had a lee shore and it was super sketchy and it didn't feel sketchy until we were totally pinned in. And it was a very important lesson. So that's what that article is about. Um, check that out. Um, Oh, Colby Thorpe, my baby brother's on here. Um, and then I have a new article, another Hawaii adventure article coming out in Cruising World. It's supposed to be in this, I think it's in this next issue that's coming out, um, about my time at Kaneohe Bay. Uh, so that should be a great, I'm happy with that article too. It's great. Um, and I'll be writing more for them. And I have an art, another article coming out in Good Old Boat at the end of the year. So lots of stuff on that front happening. Um, someone says, how, how did you get a long-term visa for New Zealand? I don't have the long-term I have, I have, I don't, I don't remember what the number of my visa is, but it's a six month visa and then it's a multiple entry visa. So it's good for six months. I fly out and come back. That's one of the reasons I'm going to the States. I could have just flown to Sydney and back, but I had this thing come up in the States. It's cool. So I fly out, come back. It resets for six months. Um, my boat is allowed to be here for two years. So I think it's a different situation if you're arriving with a boat. I think the visa situation is more flexible because they want you to keep your boat here because you're going to be spending money and, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> um, someone said, could you sail using a sextant? Yes, I can. And I have a very beautiful vintage all bronze sextant on board um good night brian um what else thank you scout doorsman appreciate it um and again if you guys see sarah answering questions take that as fact also um she'll be posting links every once in a while someone asked if i've been sailing since my younger years no i've been sailing since 2014 someone said do you think sailing is safe for a woman to do alone one thousand percent Absolutely. Um, if you don't already follow follow Holly Martin of Wind Hippie Sailing, check her channel out. She, I think she's 28 now or 29, and she's on like a 27-foot boat. Um, I'll probably be seeing Holly in the next like two weeks. She's in down in Auckland right now, and we were just talking yesterday. So um, we're gonna I think we're gonna do a joint episode or something together. Um so, yeah, it's definitely safe for women. Obviously, with women solo traveling, there's things to consider. But I would think that it's actually safer for a solo female sailor than it would be for, say, a solo female backpacker. Because you're pretty isolated on the boat. You know, the one things I would say is, like, you might not want to have a public tracker. Like, I have a public tracker so people could find out where I am. So I understand for a woman that would be a great greater risk. But yeah, I mean, yeah, solo female sailor, no problem. Um, especially because most of the most of the world, unless you sail to places that are dangerous, which we we shouldn't be doing that, then it's not. You know, it's it's really every place I've been has been super safe. Um, and I understand, like, obviously, I have a different perspective because I'm like a man, but. I definitely, I have known a handful of female solo sailors and um, it's totally doable. <clears throat> Ashley said, I'm a solo woman, just bought, oh, my thing is taken off. Just bought a Hughes 38. What advice do you wish someone would have given you? 
Um, I think the best advice I can give to anyone, especially solo, is advice someone gave me years ago when I was just traveling in Europe. <clears throat> and they told me, it's pretty simple. When you're hungry, eat. And when you're tired, sleep. Now, the tired thing is a little tricky with solo sailing because you can't just like sleep whenever you want. So that's a different sort of thing. But that's, the, you know, the, the trick is like, keep your belly full and fight fatigue in any way that you possibly can because that's how accidents happen um otherwise the thing i would say is like sailing the world to exotic locations is not that difficult once you have a boat that's like ready to go an outfit and like blue water ready that's the hardest part going out once you're out it's very affordable like I think this whole season, since leaving Hawaii, other I had major, major expenses with my engine getting rebuilt and stuff like that. But as far as my day-to-day -day expenses go, I think I, I know that I lived on maybe less than 1500 bucks a month. And I probably could have lived like on less than that even. Like your only expenses once you get out, you're living under anchor almost always. Like I hardly ever checked into marinas. The one luxury I allow, allow myself to have is like when I'm anchored near or or tied up somewhere where there's restaurants, I eat out whenever I want. If I want to eat out three times a day, I eat out three times a day because the rest of the time on passages or or in places like this, um, I'm always cooking for myself. So that's like the one luxury that I give myself. But it's really not expensive to go cruising once you have a boat that's the most expensive part is getting a boat that's outfit and ready and and having the ability to make major repairs at the end of the season like everybody i know that arrived here in new zealand everyone i know had some pretty hefty expenses to get their boats kind of back into good order after pushing i think i did i did like over 6000 nautical miles this last season and most people sailed from like the Panama Canal across. So we all did pretty heavy numbers pushing hard to get to New Zealand. So everybody had had to get in the yard or had some kind of like big repairs to think about. So that's the only thing. Otherwise, like your day to day is like not that expensive. Let's see. <clears throat> Someone says, what are the costs monthly for a solo saying? I don't know. I mean, at some point I'm going to do like a Zoom class based on breaking down my expenses, what I earned versus what I spent. But um, I just haven't had time to get that together at the moment. Um, somebody said, any boat projects coming up while in New Zealand? I have to re replace my completely smashed solar panel, which my buddy Keith just ordered it for me. And then I'm going to give him cash when I see him in like a week or so. Uh, so I have a new solar panel I'm installing. Um, other than that, I don't, I mean, the big projects was having the engine rebuilt, which cost me 3,200 US dollars. Um, otherwise, yeah, Trite is in good shape. Someone said mermaids, always a concern. And so what is the whole speed of your boat? Slow. Um, someone says, is New Zealand more safe from major storms? Well, I mean, I rode out two hurricanes here, or cyclones here. One was a small one who I rode out under anchor at Russell with no engine. And the other one was a uh, Cyclone Gabriel, which was really big, which I got into Opua Marina for that one. That was a big cyclone so there's a lot of safe harbors um but it's not totally isolated from storms big storms um someone said is there anything you miss from non-sea living nothing comes to mind because i go on land anytime i want i don't have to pay i was paying like you know almost two thousand dollars a month rent in la so i don't miss that um yeah there's nothing 
yeah, I don't, there's nothing I miss. Thank you, Archie. Appreciate it. Um, what else? Someone says, one of my general thoughts in New Zealand. Um, New Zealand is like when I get done wandering the world, this is where I will try to live. I absolutely love, love, love New Zealand, especially for a yachty. It's like there are uh, you there's there's you could not explore all the anchorages in this country in one lifetime. There's no way. The people are fantastic, super sweet. There's interesting culture, like the Maori culture. This place is fantastic. Yeah, I really love New Zealand. Someone said, do I regret, regret not visiting Marquesas? No, you can't see it all. You can't see it all. Um, someone asked when I'll go electric for my engine, when hell freezes over. Um, what else? Someone said, how long did it take to get from New Zealand from Fiji? It took me 15 days, uh, because of calms. That was like, it was like one of the most challenging passages because of no wind. I had four days of calms. I had like three days of spinnaker sailing and then the rest of the time it was heavy weather so it was like all or nothing on that passage that passage video is gonna that film was gonna be a good one um thank you thank you defiant appreciate it um someone asked if I've considered getting Starlink, um, the with Starlink, I just was on some a good friend of mine. They have like a big fifty foot catamaran, SV Womble, and uh, I love them very much. Um, I love the crew of Womble, not catamarans. Um, we went to Fengaroa, Fengaroa for a week. I think is the name of the harbor, and uh, they had Starlink, and it's pretty amazing. Having that access, especially for what I do, would be really nice. If Southeast Asia comes online um, before I leave New Zealand, then I'll, I can justify purchasing the hardware and using it uh, just because it would save me from having to hope that I have good cell service. Um, so, yeah, that's probably something that I will do. That is, I don't know. I'm a little suspect that they're they're going to start geofencing it because so many people are using it outside of you know, because their maritime package is like two two grand or something crazy a month. So I think if they get keen to the fact that people are using the RV one, they might geofence it. So we'll see. But Southeast Asia has to be online before I can justify actually buying the hardware. Um, what else? Um, what else? Someone said, do you know you can buy a simple HF receiver and receive weather faxes? That's like living in the past. I have an Iridium Go and Predict Wind, and that's what I use for all my weather stuff. I would never want anything as complicated as weather faxes. Um, <clears throat> Someone said, what places in Australia are you keen to visit? What state territories will be the focus? Um, I'm going to be, I want to do Tasmania, hopefully. And then I'm going to be cruising up the East Coast through the Torres Straits to Darwin and then clearing out of Darwin. If I have time when I'm in Darwin, it would be cool to rent a car and go into the outback and stuff. Um, I've read a lot of interesting stuff about the Aboriginal people, so it would be cool to kind of get into some of those communities. Uh, but then I'll be pushing off from Darwin. I would love to have gone and seen the Kimberleys because they look stunningly beautiful, but 
it's downwind of clearing out from Darwin, so I wouldn't be able to. Do I see sharks while I'm on passage? No. I've, I used to see sharks, white sharks, regularly in Southern California, but I haven't seen any in since I left L.A., not on passage. Um, someone said, how do you plan for having enough food and supplies, fresh water while you're staying a long time? It's not that difficult. I pack, when I do an ocean passage, I pack more than 40 days worth of food and water. Like I have, and I don't, sorry, I don't know the liter conversion right off the top of my head, but I have 35 gallons in my belly tank. And then I carry like 20 gallons in jerry cans. So 55 gallons of water for a solo is absurd. I've never come close to running out ever. Even on my passage to Hawaii, which is 32 days, <clears throat> I dropped down my water consumption quite a bit, but I'm pretty good about like, I do all my, I wash all my dishes in seawater. Um, I, even when I'm cooking pasta, it's like half seawater, half regular water or fresh water. And then I shower and bathe on Sundays um, just to like wash my hair, a simple wash off in my head. So I'm pretty good at conserving water. People are always like, oh, I need a water maker before I go out. You do not need a water maker. They're a nice luxury. I, if I could afford one, I would have a water maker, but you don't need a water maker. No one needs a water maker. Um, the only place where I was like, thought I was going to have to cut my trip short because I didn't have, I was going to run low on water was in the two motus. Cause there's no fresh water there. You can't even buy it. So, but then I met an American couple who had a water maker and they just filled up two of my jerry cans and that got me, I got to spend an extra week because of that. So, but even then I didn't need one. I could have just left, you know, and you could do rain catchment, which is kind of a pain. Um, I haven't dialed in a system that was very effective with rain catchment, but I know other people have. Someone asked if I plan on collaborating with other YouTube channels in the future. Yeah, me and Holly from Wind Hippie will probably do some stuff together. Um, we'll probably do an episode together. We might do a live stream together on her channel. Uh, we'll, we'll, but that, I don't know. I don't know. She's heading, she's leaving to head back up to the islands, I think, soon. So it would have to be in the next like month that we did that. Someone asked, are you worried about hitting a shipping container or some other large floating object in the sea? I'm certain that I hit a sea container is what broke my rudder sailing to Hawaii. So yes, always a concern. Um, someone said, Jay, when you finish circumnavigating. Oh, is that my Matthew Scarlet? Says the Matthew Scarlet. If that's my Matthew Scarlet, please let me know. Um, will you maybe just do it again? Um, yeah, so the plan is I'm gonna, I think this one will end. I think I'll be back to LA around 2026. I'll stay in LA for like a year and finish writing the book about this circumnavigation. And then I'll leave for good, um, to do a slow wander around the world east about, um, where I want to wander up the East coast of America, Greenland, Iceland, all over the UK maybe Scandinavia. I would like to go to France and like drop the mast <clears throat> and drive through the canals through France um, to the med. I think that would be cool. Um, put the mast back on and then do the med and literally just like crawl around the world for an undetermined amount of time. That's the plan. What else? What's the most beautiful place you've ever sailed to? I think the first thing that comes to mind is Morea. Unbelievable. That place is so beautiful. Um, stunning. Lay beautiful place. So that's we're just going to go with that because that's what literally the vision that popped into my head when I read that question. Someone said, are you going to head, head to Alaska? Is that still the plan? I won't be heading to Alaska for a very long time. On my east about circumnavigation, like eventually I'll go to Japan and then the Aleutians and Alaska, but that's a very, very, very long time away.
Someone said, any moments out at sea you wished you had filmed but didn't? No. I am very, very good about having the camera ready and hitting record. Good, bad, or ugly. Um, what else? What else? I'm trying to see what's happening over here. Says how many miles you got on that bad boy? Um, I think well since leaving Los Angeles, we've done eight thousand six hundred and thirty-six. I think from LA to here. Um, so that's pretty. I don't you know all that solo, which is wild. Someone said, "Do you partake in cannabis?" No. I am sober. I have no problem with people that smoke weed. Um, I voted to legalize it in California many times, and I think it should be legal, but um, I do not smoke myself. Oh, it is my Matthew Scarlett. So in the chat, it says the Matthew Scarlett. He's one of the funniest weirdest people I've ever known in my life and I love him dearly. <clears throat> um, someone said, if you're coming back to LA, are you coming to Newmark's? Um, with Tritea? Absolutely never. <laughs> absolutely never. Um, no, when I get back to LA, I'll hopefully I'll find a slip in Marina Del Rey and uh, keep Tritea there. And pop around the islands for the, the the year that I'm there, but that's 2026, so it's going to be a minute. We ever think of getting another boat? Absolutely not. Um, I think there's like a trend with YouTube channels where everybody's like, "I got to get a new boat. I I need a new boat. I need a new boat." It's absurd. Totally absurd. If something happened to my boat, then obviously I would get another boat. But knock on wood. This is this is my forever boat. She's perfect for me. And she's not perfect. But she's perfectly fine. She's an outstanding boat. And she, like, covers all my needs. Like, I'm always going to be, like, poor or poor adjacent. <laughs> so I know I can afford to maintain what it costs to keep up a 30 foot boat. And is exactly why I got a boat that was 30 foot or under. Um, she's easy, single hand. She takes care of me. She's a great blue water boat. And this trend of people thinking that, you know, they have to get a bigger boat. And I don't know if they're like trying to increase their views by doing that, or I don't know what the deal is, but everybody seems to, the only, what well, I think Delos is the only one that hasn't done that. Um, so no. Not getting another boat. I love Tritea. <clears throat> what else? Um, it says, how much do you spend each month while on your boat? Uh, I haven't broke down the numbers, but I said earlier that I lived this whole last season. I lived for between $1,500 and $2,000 a month. But a lot of times it was less than that because I'm under anchor everywhere and my expenses aren't, are very little. It's just food. So unless you're doing major boat repairs. Um, someone said, being a Yank, what's it like coming to a country where ownership of guns is illegal? Do you prefer this and feel safe? First of all, the most dangerous place I've ever been in the world, and I've been to 27 countries, is the United States of America. Hands down. Um, yeah, it's, I don't, I don't feel anything about it because I don't think about it. it. Doesn't, it's not a concern to me. I'm not scared. So I just live my life. <clears throat> oh, there's a boat coming in. That's a big boat. Um,
What else? Best book on the, that shelf. See, that's a hard one. I mean, I always talk about it. I've talked about it a bunch, but... And Sarah, you might want to get that my book suggestions list link ready. Um, but this one, this is like one of my favorites. Men Against the Sea. I've talked about it a lot, but I love that story. Intense. I actually read from it in, I think, next week's video. There's a bonus video coming out on the channel on Friday of me snorkeling at the um, Makanai Island. Um, but, and I, but my passes through Blywater, I read from that book on the episode. Um, let me see. Someone said, okay, this is a good question. What is an upgrade to your boat you wish you had right now, but can't afford to have it right now? Probably the one thing, if like I could just throw a credit card at the situation, would be an electric windlass. I had planned on installing one, and Captain Mike gave me like a used one, but I need to get one that has free fall and that also has manual ability. Um. I still have the one Mike gave me, but I need to, I would really like to install a windlass. I had planned on buying like one when I was here before I had to deal with the engine thing. And I, I haul it by hand and it's been fine. There haven't been any situations to where it was an issue hauling it by hand. I have a manual one, which I, which I only use when it's high winds or when the anchor's really stuck or if I'm anchored in like 60 or 70 feet of water and it's like very hard to haul up um but my concern is that if i ever get injured and i'm solo how do i haul up like it's pretty easy to blow your back out and i'm not getting any younger so i think that if i could do, do like throw money at any upgrade right now it would be a really nice electric windlass with a manual hand crank option um that's what i would that's what i would choose Um, what else someone said do a tattoo live stream I might get tattooed when I get to LA I have to see if if Sean's available I've been talking about doing this like tattoo history of body modification and the history of sailors and tattoos I want to do this episode I've been talking about it since I was in Hawaii and I might film that when I'm in Los Angeles with Sean Barber. Um, and maybe we'll, maybe we'll film me getting tattooed. Um, he tattooed me for the natural history museum. They had an exhibition on the history of tattooing and I was tattooed as part of that exhibition. And so gallery like museum people would come by and watch me get tattooed, which was funny. Um, What else? Someone asked if I've been a good swimmer my whole life or did I learn in order to sail? Um, I'm just an okay swimmer. I wouldn't even say I'm a great swimmer. I swim a lot. Well, not here. The water's so cold, but. Joshua Slocum didn't know how to swim at all. So you don't have to know how to swim to sail. It's a good idea, but not mandatory. Someone asked about what manual windlasses. I have the low friends. I don't know what model I bought it used. Mine is jacked because like the chain, uh, the, there's like a chain stripper on the bottom has been missing since I got it. And I did a bunch of cowboy fixes on it, which never really works. So mine gets jammed about every five cranks and I have to beat it with the, with the handle to get the chain to unjam. 
So that's frustrating, which is one of the reasons I usually haul it by hand. But if it didn't have that silliness, um, it would be great. Someone asked, uh, how do you answer uh, what you gained from this experience so far? Um, that the world is mostly an incredibly beautiful place with amazing people. Amazing. It's so easy for us to get caught up in all the bullshit, especially like doom scrolling on the internet. And not that I'm immune from it. I'm not saying that, you know, I don't do the same thing. But it's so easy to get caught up with all the bullshit. The last two videos I posted on the channel, those are the ones, you know? The video that the children leading me to the waterfall. That moment, that moment in time for me, I'll never forget that moment. Their laughter. There was no cell service in that little hole. No one has cell phones. There's no internet in there. That moment. That was, that is beautiful. That's what it is about. The moment on Makanai with Pow and Mary, former leper colony. That's what it's about. That's why I'm out here. That's why I do this. I just want to collect as many memories as I can and see as much beauty as possible. That's what I'm getting from this. That's That's what's important to me. And I get to share it with you guys. The world's amazing. It's a beautiful place. Someone said, what food do you crave the most? Pizza? Uh, I eat pizza a lot and really good pizza. There's really good food in New Zealand, which has been really nice because... Food was pretty minimal uh, through the South Pacific. Someone keeps asking about sailboat engines, if more horsepower is better. It doesn't matter. It has to do with your whole speed of your boat. So, and an, an engine, if you're worried about horsepower on a sailboat, you should have a power boat. Like, an engine should be powerful enough. It's an auxiliary engine. It should be powerful enough to get you out of a sketchy anchorage when you're on lee shore. Yeah. I, it shouldn't be undersized, but you shouldn't be concerned about how much horsepower a sailboat has. A sailboat is for sailing. And that's kind of all I'll say about that. Someone said, is it hard emotionally being alone for so long at sea? It's it's actually, the ocean crossings don't aren't that lonely because you're thrown into a different kind of world and a different kind of pace. And I love solo ocean sailing. I absolutely love it. Um, it's a different rhythm that happens. And you have so much happening and so little happening at the same time may sound absurd, but that it's not like you're just sitting in a room in your house by yourself. So it's not like, like, uh, if you know, like my passage to French Polynesia was 26 days. It's not like if I was sitting, I had to sit in an apartment by myself for 26 days. That's not how, that's not the same one for one comparison. So you're constantly tending the ship. And when you're not, and she's doing, everything's doing her thing. Then I read, I write. Um, I edit video. Um, and then at night, I've talked about this in past videos, but at night, my sleep schedule is like from 9 p.m. till usually about <clears throat> 5 a.m. I have alarms set for every hour on the hour. 
and I have AS on, so there's alarms that go off to let me know if a ship's going to come. With the ship gets within eight miles of me, and it's going to come within two miles, then an alarm goes off. But my older brother sends me shipping reports when he gets up in the morning and when he goes to sleep at night. So I already know well in advance any boat ships with AIS that I'm going to intersect with. And I've seen very little. I think I've probably seen four, maybe four ships total in 6,000 miles. So you don't see a lot. Um, so from 9 p.m. on, I sleep for an hour. My alarm goes off. I get up, look for ships, check my course. Um, sometimes the ship wakes me up in the middle of that hour or any hour. You get up, you adjust sail, you drop, you shorten sail, whatever. And so, so you have this, all these things happening. So there's not as much time to sort of feel lonely because there's like, you're just kind of in this sort of like zone. I got much, much more lonely cruising in beautiful places by myself. Like in the perfect world, like friends and family would meet me in places like Fiji and hang out for like a week and we could see all kinds of stuff. Like that's where it gets lonely because you're like looking at these stunningly beautiful places and it's, it's so much, it enriches the experience to get to turn to someone and be like, can you believe how amazing this is? So that's where I got lonely um, would be in those situations. And it's nice here in New Zealand because I've made some really dear friends and spent time with incredible people. So um, yeah, I'm in a good place now. Um, let me see what's happening here. Someone said, how often do I get sick? I, the only time, well, I don't, I don't get seasick at all anymore. I used to get seasick every time I went sailing, but I don't, I just have so much time on boats now. I don't get seasick anymore. Um, I may feel a little off, um, I always say if my eyeballs feel like they're not calibrated, I take like half a pill and then I'm fine. But yeah, I don't get seasick anymore. Someone said, do I plan on writing a book for my journals one day? I already have two books out, both of sailing journals. Um, and yes, there are actually the 100,000 subs thing is like one of the things I'm putting together a proposal to start approaching literary agents for big book deals. I have two, two big books that I'm writing that I'm going to, I'm writing. Well, I've had 20,000 words of the book written on the passage from the passage LA to Hawaii and that whole situation. And that I will have published on one of the top five publishers. So to do that, I need to get a literary agent. And so I'm putting that proposal together now and hopefully I'll be able to meet some, with some agents while I'm in the States, this, um, Northern, Northern hemisphere summer. What else? Oh, hello, Rebecca. <laughs> what else? What else? Someone said, any equipment you totally regret buying? Yeah, I bought like a cell phone booster that I've never installed because I just absolutely have never needed it. So that was a waste of money. Um, uh, Sarah, yes, you're correct. Final Cut Pro is what I used to edit. Someone says, what's your anti-pirate strategy? Not to sell where pirates are. Pretty simple. Um, 
Um, what else? I wonder if there's anything else to talk about. How long have we been on here? One hour. Okay, we're doing all right. 400 people. Hi, everyone. Thanks for showing up. <clears throat> Thanks again for the 100,000 subs. That is bonkers. Totally bonkers. Oh, goodness. Man, this thing is making me dizzy. Um, any of my people on there? Oh, hi, Daphne. Good to see you on here. Um, says, how has your outlook on life changed, if at all, since setting out? Um, that's a tricky question. Because when I left LA to start the circumnavigation, my life fell apart. So I think everything changed. And my life feels so surreal that I always tell I always tell my good friends it it feels like I'm in a coma and this is all a dream. I always say best coma ever. Um it just feels very surreal. It doesn't, my life does not feel like it's actually happening. I'm, you know, I think to answer your question, I'm much more relaxed now than I ever have been in my entire life. And obviously that my life, I'm getting to live the life I want. I'm getting to live a dream life. I'm aware of that. Um, I worked paycheck to paycheck my entire life since I was a teenager. And now I'm my own boss. So that makes life less difficult as well. More difficult in some ways because you don't have any kind of, you know, fallback. And there's not much of a fallback plan. But um, I don't know. I think that. You know, okay, here's here's the answer to that. I think Daphne, you I think Daphne asked this question. Here's the answer. I'm an introvert, almost Olympic level introvert, um, which is funny that I make my living sharing my life online, but I do it alone. So um when I left Los Angeles, one of the things I promised myself is that as long as it wasn't illegal or too dangerous. I would try to say yes to kind of any sort of situation. Um, unless I just knew that I would be miserable in that situation. But before I would tend to like not accept offers for different sort of social situations that because I, I was like, it was outside of my comfort zone or, you know, I was shy or something. So that's something I've had to sort of, I, I made myself, I'm like, okay, you're going to say yes to anything that's not too illegal or too dangerous. I don't want to end up in a foreign prison. So that's the key to that. Danger is like, my idea of danger is different than other people's idea of danger. So I think that's enriched my life quite a bit because I've definitely had experiences that had the person who I was before I left Los Angeles would have not taken part in certain sort of you know, and it might be something as simple as like, you know, I be motoring by someone's boat and they're like, hey, you want to come on and like have dinner, you know, which is pretty common in anchorages. It's pretty neat. And I'm like, hell yeah. Or why well, I remember my buddy Keith, but I was already friends with Keith. But Keith, when I first got here and that's how I met my good friends, Ian and Laura, who are anchored near to me. Keith, who's my good buddy. He's a Kiwi. And he said. It was like two days after I got here, I think. He was like, hey, we're going to go see these fancy toilets. You want to come? I was like, absolutely. Now, normally, if someone's like, you want to see some fancy toilets? I'm like, mm, maybe I'll, that's a hard pass. Um, so, you know, I think saying yes to more things has um, enriched my life and something that I didn't do beforehand.
what else? Let's see here. Someone says, do I have any other hobbies except for sailing and writing and reading? Bird watching. I'm not as like good of a birder as like Sarah or my mom. They're like expert birders, but um, I love seeing bird. I love all wildlife, but birds are, um, I really, I always think about my mama because she loved birds. So it's, it's almost like when I get to go bird watching, I, I get to hang out with my mama. Who I lost my mom. Well, me and my brothers lost my mama 10 years ago next month. Someone said, do I watch other sailing channels when you're on land? I don't watch any other channels. When Before I left to go cruising, I watched YouTube a lot of YouTube channels, but I have not watched one in a very long time. Um, what else? Are you ever scared to see orcas? No, there's only one place in the world where orcas are attacking sailboats, and that's off the coast of off the coast of Portugal. And someone did something to those orcas, and they're retaliating against boats. So I've had orcas surface in 2015 when we were just off Point Conception. We had an orca surface so close that the dude on deck thought it was a periscope for a submarine because their jet black fin came out feet from the boat. It was two adults and three babies. They stayed with us for an hour and hung out. So no, generally orcas are not dangerous except for that one isolated pod, which has been causing hell. Um, and they believe, the experts believe they're juveniles and that they will grow out of that behavior. So let's just hope they don't teach it to another pod before then. Um... What else? So if you didn't have a YouTube channel, would you have preferred to, to have access to the internet or to be totally isolated? I love the internet because I love to learn. And it's like the greatest education tool ever invented on the planet. Someone said, where can they purchase my books? Um, Sarah, see if you can find the link to the books. Sharon Jones has said that recently became a patron. Um, I'll take a minute to thank all my patrons. I have a pretty small Patreon crew compared to other channels. So thank y'all. I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea. And they generally just pay me to not wear a bikini. So thank you to my patrons. I really appreciate y'all. Um, and I hope you like all the stuff I, I give you. I don't I don't post much behind a paywall just because I feel like I I feel like my patrons support me because they see value in what I'm doing. Um, but they get the videos early and then after long passages, they get thing. It's called a post passage post where I sit down and do an hour long conversation talking about what the passage was like. So that's one of the few things that I, that only happens for the patrons. Um, and then I give them like real time updates and stuff, but thanks so much to my patrons. I appreciate it. Oh, I guess that's the other thing I talk about. What is today? I don't know what today is. Today is, today's Wednesday in the future. Next week is my birthday, April 11th. I'll be 48 years old. Um, if the weather allows, I'm going to be going to Thiri Tiri, which is a bird sanctuary island. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm here. I'm riding out a storm that's happening this weekend, pretty gnarly storm. And then I'm going to pop over to, I can't remember the name of the peninsula. It's near Army Bay. Um, and then go over to Tiri Tiri for my birthday. Um, if it's not too stormy, that's the goal. Um, what else? Sorry, the thing is like 
super loud. I'm just reading the chat here, trying to see if there's anything I can <clears throat> answer here. Um, <laughs> someone said RAP headphone users. Sorry. <laughs> that thing is very loud. Uh, someone asked if I've seen UFOs. I have not. I totally believe there's probably UFOs out there for sure. I don't think we're the only Petri dish in the universe, um, but I have not seen them. Someone said, how come the boat isn't moving crazy? Are you on stable water? I'm in a very protected anchorage. Yeah, very, very protected anchorage. Um, no, I'm not using Starlink. I'm just tethered to my cell phone. Really good cell phone service in New Zealand. Hello, also from New Zealand, Tomas. What else? Um, someone said, have I sailed the Bermuda Triangle? Yes, I have sailed. I've transited the entire Bermuda Triangle from Puerto Rico to Bermuda to North Carolina. And we had one day into the Bermuda Triangle. It was on a delivery in 2016 on a 42-foot Dufour. And one day into the Bermuda Triangle, the autopilot totally scrambled and was displaying like hieroglyphs almost. And the captain sat down and made a legend of the hieroglyphs. It still held our course, but we would have to enter these different shapes to change our course. And he made a whole legend and then put it in a piece of plastic right by the controls. And our engine stopped working as soon as we got into the Bermuda Triangle. And then we went all the way to Bermuda just sailing. Um, the engine would run to charge the batteries, but you couldn't give it any kind of throttle or it would stall. And then we got the engine fixed in Bermuda and then the autopilot never went back to normal. It was very weird. Oh, Veronica said it's Wednesday in America, but Thursday here. Yeah, I don't even know what day it is. Whatever Veronica says. Correct. <laughs> it's Thursday. <laughs> Someone said, how do I deal with constantly being in the sun? Um, usually I wear, especially on passages, if I'm actually out in the sun for any amount of time, I put on a tech shirt, like a long sleeve tech shirt and a big hat. Um, I try to keep covered up as much as possible. Even like I have my little sunshade in the cockpit, I made that out of my old mainsail. And so since it's just Dacron, I've gotten sunburned through that before. So I want to get that remade out of like umbrella material um, to help with that as well. Sarah posted a link to one of my books. What else? What time is it? 119. We're doing okay, I guess. Oh, we still got 443 people. Thank y'all for joining. It's nice. I wasn't sure. It was like such short notice. I wasn't sure how many people would be able to sign in and say hi. Someone says, did you try the new water filter? I don't have a water filter. I have no idea what you're talking about. Colby Thorpe said audio is fine. Um, what else? Hmm. I wonder if there's anything else I could share with you guys. I don't know. I don't know. Someone said, hi, uh, did I like Fangare? I loved Fangare. 
And um, I really enjoyed being at Town Basin. I was at Town Basin for six days, which is the marina that's way up the river. And amazing place to stay. Really sweet staff in the office. Great walking access, really good food nearby. Um, actually had two friends that were staying there as well. So that was cool. Um, yeah. Oh, I guess that's the thing I could talk about. I um, A funny thing about New Zealand is there's no one that does cleans the bottoms of boats and scuba diving. So I tried to get my bottom spray like you have to haul out for them to pressure wash it. I, I checked on prices at Alpua and they wanted like like $600 or something to do it, which is I was like, there's no way. And there's areas on the charts that say in water cleaning where you can scrape it yourself. But it was like very cold water here. And um, I was in Opua for two months, two and a half months, really nutrient rich water. So I had tons of muscles that grew on the bottom of my boat, even though I put a fresh coat of bottom paint on exactly a year ago. Um, thank you so much for the donation. Um, so I ended up getting hauled out at Riverside Marina up uh, the uh, Patea River at Bangare. And um, it was 125 bucks US, I think. They hauled me out, sprayed it. Uh, me and my friend Jeanne ended up scraping with like blades for an hour to get the muscles off. Uh, uh, I think uh, barnacles rather, barnacles. And um, super hard work. So I'm going to go back there in August, I think they kind of have like every, everything's kind of chaos right now, everybody getting ready to go to the islands. So I think in August I'll go back and have them sand it down and then I'm going to apply new bottom paint. Um, but yeah, up, up the river. I mean, the only downfall to Fangare is that it is so far up the river and you have to go under the drawbridge, which is kind of a stressful. Someone asked if YouTube knows where to send my plaque, um, the 100,000 subs plaque. Yeah, I fill out, I'll fill out all the info and have it shipped to Los Angeles. What else? Someone asked if I'm ever coming to the United Kingdom. Uh, yes, for sure, but not until my next circumnavigation. Uh, someone said, am I close to Antarctica? Yes, we're very close to Antarctica. Yeah, that's the water is very cold here. But the funny thing is the water temperature is probably very similar to Los Angeles. Like Southern California has brutally cold water because all the water, the currents come from Alaska. Someone asked while I was in Fiji if I saw any survivor locations. I've never seen that show, so I have no idea. Someone asked if I would consider a pet on board. I would never have a pet on board, ever. Traveling to island nations is extremely difficult and sometimes impossible with a pet. Um, I think that, and this is just my opinion, so anyone getting butt hurt right now, just relax. Um, I think it's selfish to take pets. Cats do very well on boats, but the problem with cats is that I've never read a sailing story where the cat came out alive. And I don't want to lose a cat. I love cats very much. So I would not want to lose my cat overboard. I don't want that memory. Um, and with dogs, dogs are fantastic. I love dogs. Um, but all the different countries have such insanely strict rules and rightfully so because they're trying to islands are very susceptible to having diseases run rampant and kill everything. So there's a reason these laws exist, but a couple things like having a dog on board for 20 days, I think is pretty cruel, you know, on ocean passages. And I've had to, <laughs> row my old dog steady ashore in really terrible conditions so he could use the bathroom because he refused to use the bathroom on board. So that's another element of like, you know, um, a challenge. So I personally would never have a pet ever on a boat.
what else? Someone keeps people keep asking, what's my next boat? This is my life. This is my forever boat. What else? You guys want to, for anybody that came late, I'll show you guys around the anchor real quick. I showed everybody, the people are here in the beginning. but And uh, I'm in Bonacord Anchorage <clears throat> on Cow Wow, is how it's told, it's pronounced Cow Wow Island in Horaki Gulf, New Zealand, Aotearoa. It's very rainy. I thought that boat was on fire earlier. I was like, oh, shit. But it's not. It's on land. Over there at the Blue Stripe, that's SV Rala. My good friends, Ian and Laura. I'm going to go have dinner with them later. They're going to pick me up in the dinghy so I don't have to put my dinghy in the water, which is awesome. Very rainy. Thanks for all the congratulations on the 100,000 subs. It is bonkers. Someone says, what's my opinion of a Catalina 30? Catalinas are awesome boats. Um, you have to look out for the Catalina smile, that it's a commonly known problem where the keel bolts stretch and there's a gap, you know, and the keel threatens to fall off. But I met a young Argentinian couple in Fiji, Port Dinara, who had sailed... They bought a Catalina 36 in Florida and they had sold it all the way to Fiji and now they're in Australia on a Catalina 36. So those boats can, if you outfit them right, they can put in some miles and there's a ton of them and they're affordable. Someone asked if I've ever sailed the Great Lakes. I have not, but I know that you guys get real gnarly storms up there. What else? Someone said, how skilled do you have, would you have to to say you need to be in order to do the kind of sailing sailing you do in the places you go. Um, I think the first thing that I tell everyone that asks me about people who have this dream of this about going ocean sailing, whether solo or with a loved one or crewed or whatever. The first thing I tell every single person who reaches out to me with this question is volunteer on a delivery or as crew or pay your way as crew on an ocean going boat and make sure that you actually enjoy ocean sailing before you start investing in a boat. Cause it's real easy to get seduced by the romance of sailing around the world on a boat. And it's a whole nother reality to actually being on a boat in the ocean. And don't think for a second that cruising down the coast of whichever place you live is ocean sailing, because that is not ocean sailing. That's coastal cruising. Make sure that you actually enjoy ocean sailing before you invest your life savings, before you sell your house and buy a boat. And important, another important factor is make sure that if it's not just you, make sure that you and your partner also enjoy it. It's, 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 it's very important because it's so easy to be seduced by this lifestyle, especially with YouTube, because now people can see it where used to, we'd have to read books and try to imagine things with YouTube. There's so many of us out here sharing our adventures. It's very easy to be like, 
that is what I want to do. But you might find that when you get out on an ocean crossing, you're like, this is the worst thing I've ever done in my life. And maybe not. Maybe you're going to be like, this is for sure what I want to do. That's what happened to me. I did my first like proper ocean uh, sailing was on a delivery I did from Puerto Rico to Bermuda to North Carolina. And I was seasick the first couple of days. But then after that, you know, and I was like, I didn't know how I was going to react being three days from land. I was like, am I going to freak out? Is it going to, am I going to have anxiety about not being able to see land or knowing that there's no way to get to land? And I had the opposite effect. It was like, I had never been, and even with like, there were four of us on the boat. I had never had such peace in my heart. And that's when I knew ocean sailing was for me. I knew I didn't want to do it with a bunch of strangers. That was another thing that was confirmed to me. I was like, I don't want to do this with strangers. But for me, it was confirmed. And I believe that to be true with everyone. You will know <laughs> within three or four days if you enjoy ocean sailing or not. Um, or you're going to be like, get me to like land immediately. So that's that's my advice. And then once you're sure that you actually like ocean sailing, then, you know, start putting in ton, get a ton of experience. Look, sure, there are people that have been like, I know this one dude who had never even slept on a boat before he, and he had money. So he bought a, a boat that was already outfitted and everything. And it was like a good boat and everything because he could afford to buy it. He got on the boat. He had never even spent the night on a boat and he left to sail solo to Hawaii. And he got his ass kicked. Like, sure, some people can survive that. But that doesn't mean it's, like, responsible. Um, so get a ton of sailing. I mean, I sailed. I had, I don't know. I had a ton of experience before I left. A ton. Um, so I definitely think. You need to, one, make sure you actually enjoy it. And two, gain experience close enough that you don't have to be rescued by the Coast Guard and lose your boat. Let's see, what else? Someone said, why Alberg 30 and not a 37? Because I knew I was going to be poor my whole life and I knew I could afford to upkeep a 30 and I didn't have money to buy a bigger boat when I bought Tritea. Someone, is there any value in being a ham radio operator? I think ham radios are a hobby. They're wholly unnecessary in the marine environment. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. If that, if you enjoy doing that, enjoy talking to other people, you know, I think that's great. But um, they, they're not needed on a boat at all. Someone said, what is that book, Islands, behind you? This book is one of the worst books I've ever read in my life. And I don't say that often. But I have, I'm almost done with it. But I get, my eyes roll so much because this book sucks so bad. And the idea of it, it's about islands, you know? It's like, but the writer sucks. He is terrible. And like, there's big portions of the information. We read the same books that he's referencing and he got the information wrong. I hate this book. I should probably get up, but I'm forcing myself to finish it before I get rid of it. Um, someone says, how much money do you make on YouTube now? I make, I make about, and the majority I say majority, 
probably 70% of my income as a YouTuber is from ad revenue. So just you guys watching it. So thank you. Um, I make, last month I made, I think $2,300 in ad revenue. But last month was crazy because my article on Yachting World came out and I saw a huge spike in the channel, which was really cool. Um, normally I make between a thousand or 1200 and 1500 a month ad revenue on YouTube. That's, that's my average. Um, I make quite a lot less on my Patreon, but so that's about what I make. I usually, I usually make between 2000 and 2,500 bucks a month is what I, what I total income. But my only expenses are other than boat repairs is like my Iridium Go data package with predict wind i think that's i have it at the mid-tier thing right now because i use the blog a lot in the tracker i can't remember what i'm paying 119 bucks a month or something for that my phone bill is like 100 bucks a month because i have a roaming plan um i found that to be easier than getting sim cards everywhere i go and actually have more it's cheaper to me to have that plan in the states than it is to the amount of data they give you in other countries is like this so that expense credit i'm trying to pay all my credit card bills down because the the well the rudder repair and the um the engine um so that's it like paying down credit cards and then eating you know otherwise it's like i rarely stay at marinas Someone asked if I'd seen blue whales in my travels. I've seen blue whales in Southern California, but I've never seen them out at sea. Someone asked if I'd be able to do it. I've done if I'd swapped out an outboard. I think putting, especially what James Baldwin does, I call him the butcher of Albergs because it makes me mental that he's cutting holes in the backs of these perfect boats and dropping a stupid outboard in outboards are unreliable they use explosive gas it's completely bonkers ridiculous no i would never do that ever and actually the dude that bought eve jelinus's boat he just bought jean de sud he's been corresponding with me and he's putting an inboard back in which is like one of the greatest things i ever heard i was very stoked to hear that and it's not electric Veronica is asking where I weathered out the cyclone. Uh, cyclone Gabriel, I was at Opua Marina, tied up between two boats much bigger than mine. And it was, um, I filmed the whole thing. There's an episode coming out of it. I went walking around in the middle of the cyclone. It was fun. Someone says, do I ever eat lunch or always just second breakfast? No, let's get this straight. I eat first breakfast. I eat second breakfast. I eat first lunch, sometimes second lunch. And then dinner, and then I might have ramen later. I am always starving. Always. Someone asked me to elaborate on why I don't like electric motors. Electric motors, they're cute. Um, a cute concept. They're good for coastal cruising. Um is it possible to sell around the world with electric motors? Sure. And I only say that because tons, all my, many of my heroes sell around the world with no engine. So it's, it's basically like sailing with no engine, but it is almost impossible to keep up the battery bank charged up enough without running a generator. And then you're defeating the whole purpose of the whole thing. So I do not think electric motors are anywhere near a realistic option. I think they're a cool idea. The one thing I would be interested in is if I could set it up one of those hybrids where there's like an electric a uh, motor around the prop shaft. So but you'd need like a pillow block and all kinds of weird stuff. The other thing is I can get my diesel engine fixed in any hole in the world. Someone's grandpa or uncle can fix this diesel engine anywhere in the world. That's not true for very sensitive 
parts on an electric motor. And I tell you what, I have spent a small fortune getting small parts shipped in to foreign ports. So electric motors, I do not believe they are a realistic option. And I know people are doing it. I know, you know, whatever, but I, um, it's not for me. That's for sure. Someone said, will you post this whole video? Yeah, this video will be up tomorrow and it should have the chat stream. Otherwise, it would just look like I was a lunatic talking to myself. <laughs> so, have you ever guys, I have, have you guys ever seen that hilarious comic Garfield minus Garfield where that dude photoshops Garfield out of all the comic strips? So, John just looks like he's talking to himself and like he's totally out of his mind. It's very funny, very existential. What else? What else? Someone says, if money was not an issue, what would you do differently? Probably very little. I'm, I'm living the life I want to live. I live simply. I'm happy. Yeah, I don't know that I would do anything that different. My life is more determined by the weather and the seasons than money. So, um, yeah, I don't think that there's much I would do different, actually. Someone's asking where they can donate money to the cause other than YouTube. Um, Sarah, could you post like a link? If so, like I have like PayPal and Venmo. Some people have donated that way. Someone said, did people try to talk you out of becoming a solo sailor? No, not at all. Um, but Anyone who knew me before knew that knows I'm extremely stubborn, so I, I would do whatever I wanted to anyway. So, someone from the OCC says, James, if you ever sail to BC, Alaska, if you're in North America this summer, find Harlequin on the OCC fleet map. We'd love to have you. I love being in the Ocean Cruising Club, and it's so nice to see another member. Hello. We had a great Ocean Cruising Club meetup here the other day, organized by Mary. Um, I think her boat is Kismet. Um, it's so cool. It's such a rad organization. I write for the Flying Fish at least once a year. It's a private publication that they put out. Um, Ocean Cruising Club is a really cool organization where there's no brick-and-mortar store. There's no yacht club. And it's a group of sailors cruising the world. You, um, I can't remember the boat size requirements, but it has to be under a certain size boat. And you have to have sailed uh, a nonstop passage of at least a thousand miles offshore to even apply for membership. And then you have to be sponsored into the organization. And like one of the, one of their, like, one of their like mottos is like, we don't care who you are. We care what you've done. And it's awesome because we have these little burgies, which is like the little triangle flags on boats that has a flying fish on it and they're yellow and blue. And now you, I sail into an anchorage. I see these burgies flying on a boat and I know I have like family and friends immediately in that anchorage. I go over, say, what's up? I'm in the OCC. And then yeah, I've made so many friends that way. Um, outstanding organization. And last April, I received an award for them for my passage to Hawaii, the qualifiers mug. Um, and I love the organization so much. Boy, Colby Thorpe is like on the troll hunt. Thank you, Colby. Someone 
Someone asked if I ever thought I was going to die from rough seas. No, I have not. Someone asked, what did I do before sailing? Um, I was an art handler for the better part of 20 years in Los Angeles. So I worked for all the top museums, private collections, celebrities, big galleries, you name it, all over Southern California and in Northern California as well. Someone asked, why not sail with a bike for further inland explorations? The only reason I don't have a folding bike is because I have no space for anything like that on Triteo. Otherwise, I probably would have one. The other thing is I have very little access to exercise. So a lot of people ask this question on the YouTube channels. They're like, why don't you get a bike or a scooter? Um, I, I need to walk. I like to walk. Um, so I don't mind. I think the longest, the longest walk I did... Was at Huahini when I went and saw the the blue eyed eels. I think that was fourteen miles or something like that. I can't remember, but um, that was pretty gnarly. I was pretty my legs were pretty sore the next day. Um, but yeah, I need the exercise, and again, it's hard to find exercise on a boat, and I'm not young, so I need to keep fit. Someone said, "What? Are, tell us what you're most afraid of on passage." I, I'm not afraid of anything on passage. Um, someone asked, "Did I get a new shopping buggy?" No, I can't find one. I want to find the same kind of granny cart I had from Hawaii. I loved it. I've only seen the big fold-out carts, which are wagons, which are awesome. But again, they just take up too much space on Tritea. So I'm still looking for the right sort of granny cart scenario. I do need one. What else? Oh, you know what? That's a funny thing. Somebody mentioned Amazon. That's a funny thing I'll mention that's like a new reality for me is that the fact that once I left the States and Hawaii, like, here's a good example. Like, you can't buy 110 appliances or 120 appliances. So, like, my electric kettle, like, I can't, I would have to get, like, a, I would have to use an inverter or, like, a converter because everything is, like, Nothing has an American plugs <clears throat> and everything is 220 or whatever. <clears throat> That's something I'd never thought about. Even down to like, like I have extension cords. I have a plenty of extension cords, but if my extension cords failed, I couldn't buy an extension cord that worked on my boat. I guess I could get the, all the adapters and stuff, but it gets a little sketch. That's something I'd never thought about before leaving. I was like, Oh wow. You got to make sure that that's just something to think about as far as like appliances go. Someone said, have I ever thought about transiting the Northwest Passage? And yes, I have. And I very well may be doing that on the boat that I learned how to sail on. Sailing yacht Selkie out of Scotland, based in the Isle of Egg, uh, captained by Celia Bull. Me and Celia are talking about doing the Northwest Passage maybe in 2025. We're just starting to look into all the paperwork and stuff on, on Selkie on her boat, which is a custom high latitudes aluminum or aluminum boat, uh, lifting centerboard. Um, she used to run, she used to, she's done Cape Horn five times. She, she used to run charters and stuff down to Antarctica. She's a super badass. She runs charters out of Scotland. Now she's in Norway with my, or I guess they're in Shetland now. They just did a winter trip for fun to Norway and the fjords and stuff in the winter. So <clears throat> we're talking about doing the Northwest passage. Um, but we got to look into all the legality aspects of that and then figure out funding 
because it's mostly just motoring. There's almost no sailing. So we have to figure out how to pay for all the diesel and all that stuff. So that's definitely something I want to do, but I would always want to do it on the right vessel. I know Matt did it. Matt Rutherford did it on that Albin Vega, um, but that was obviously not <laughs> the right vessel to do it on. Um, but I would love to do it. Someone asked, how many meters is the biggest boat you've ever been on? Um, the biggest sailboat, like recreational sailboat I've been on, I think is 52 foot. So I don't know off the top of my head what that meter conversion is. <clears throat> Someone said, ever wake up to a close call? No, I have not. Thankfully, not yet. Try to keep it that way. Hardest thing as far as that sort of thing goes is um, when you happen to do like night passages close to shore with shipping traffic and everything like that. So when I do that, being solo, I sleep in the cockpit with the alarm set for every 15 minutes. And the AS alarms on and all that stuff. And so every 15 minutes, get up, look around, check it out. So I try to limit those sort of things. Last time I did a passage like that was in Fiji. It's actually one of the episodes coming up through Blywater when I sailed from Makanai Islands to the Asawa Group. Um, it was mostly open water and there's so much coral there that boats don't usually transit at night. So I was kind of out there by myself. <clears throat> But I timed it so that I would get through the coral in the daylight and then arrive to the next bit of coral pass at sunup, which isn't perfect visually, but I just stayed on my <clears throat> Navionics real tight. Someone said, ever accidentally fall overboard alone? No, otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here telling the story. Someone said, yes, the shadow of my mast in the fog was my scariest moment. That was on the Hawaii passage where I looked out and it was very foggy. And there was a shadow from my, like what? Oh, it must've been my running light cast a shadow of my mast. And I thought there was a mast right behind me and it scared the shit out of me. I thought a boat was about to run me down, but it was just my shadow. I'm scared of my own shadow, like the groundhog. What else? Um, what else? Boy, it's raining like crazy here. What time is it? One fifty-three. All right, we're going to close this out of two hours because I start to lose my voice <clears throat> after two hours. Um, 363. I can't believe there's so many of y'all still on here. So cool. Thank you, guys. It's awesome. I always set up these things based on Los Angeles time, because that's the home port for Tritea. And that's because so many of my people that started originally, my original people that followed me from the beginning were all in Southern California. <clears throat> so it'll always be based on LA time and try to account for the terrible traffic. Someone said, I clear my throat a lot, I've noticed. Yeah, if you talk nonstop to a camera by yourself for two hours, you'll probably be clearing your throat too. But I also have allergies, so I do clear my throat a lot. Someone says, what time is it there? It is almost 4 p.m. on April 6th, Thursday in New Zealand. Someone asked, would I race? Sorry. It's raining so much that my bilge likes to fill up um i would i would not race the ggr i have no interest in doing a solo non-stop around the world anything because the whole reason i do this is to see tons of amazing places not to just be by myself and be like i sailed 
all the way around without doing anything else. That has absolutely zero interest to me. Zero. Like, why would you sell by so many amazing places? No interest whatsoever. What is my favorite island culture I have visited? Fiji, hands down. Fiji is amazing. I could spend three seasons in Fiji. And I've met so many people who have spent, I met some cruisers that spent 13 seasons going back and forth between New Zealand and Fiji. <clears throat> Fiji is fantastic. Very cool. <clears throat> Someone said, have I been to Thailand? I have not been to Thailand, but I plan on going to Thailand for absolutely sure because my favorite food on the whole planet is Pad Thai. I love it. And also, Willie Tasker, my cell sponsor, is in Phuket, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, so I'm going to go tour their factory and probably get them to refresh my sales while I'm there and stuff. So uh, I'm excited, excited for Thailand. Someone asked, I'm not going to the Galapagos. The Galapagos are near Panama. No. It also costs $3,000 for a private yacht to go to Galapagos. So I'll probably never go to the Galapagos. Unless it's on someone else's boat who's paying the fee. What else? Two more minutes. So I guess I'll just say thanks so much again to everyone. I really appreciate it. Like the hundred thousand is point the camera around it, cool stuff. And then y'all are the ones showing up and watching it. So I really appreciate it. You guys have given me the possibility of a dream life, an impossible dream life. I would still be doing this. Even if I didn't have a channel, I would just, you know, be doing odd jobs along the way, scraping by. <clears throat> and you guys tuning in every week, watching the videos, commenting. Y'all are the reason that I can do this to the level of which I do it and be able to share as much as I share. Otherwise, I'd probably have to like sail till I ran out of money, then go back somewhere and, you know, work a job and then keep sailing. So the I wouldn't be able to keep up a weekly schedule if I was having to work a, a sort of regular job and say, so y'all are the reason that these videos come out and that I get to share the stuff with you. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to sign out now before I lose my voice. Thanks so much for everything. I appreciate it. And um, thanks to my patrons. You guys are awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, lots more to come. And uh, there is some other very exciting news about stuff coming up in the very near future. Uh, so keep an eye on the channel for that. And make sure you hit the like button on this stream so that everyone can see it. Because then it'll kick it out. More people see it. And um yeah, thanks again. Fair winds until next time.